Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with another two-box break of Prism Premier League Soccer. This stuff has been hot. We're on break 23 right here. Break 24, which is already on the site right now if you're watching live tonight on uh, on the 12th, Friday the 12th. Uh, that's our last two boxes of that case we popped open. I don't see any more cases, so might be it for now until we get more. And maybe the next case we get could be a different price point. All cards ship. Thanks, everyone, for getting. Thanks specifically to this group of people right here for getting in. I appreciate it. There are the teams right here. And let's roll it. Let's randomize each list three times. That's easy. One, two, and three. After three times, we've got Robert down to Robert. One and a two, three times for the teams. One, two, and three. We got Aston Villa down to Arsenal. Anyone actually here watching this break? I guess any trades is pretty much what I'm getting at. If there's nobody here, then really no need for a trade window. Robert with Aston Villa, Michael with Burnley, Robert with West Ham, Derek with Crystal Palace Leeds, Robert with Leicester, Jeff with Man United, Michael with Tottenham, Will with Chelsea, Robert with Sheffield and West Brom. Jeff with Everton, Caleb with Fulham, Anthony with Brighton, Robert with Wolves and Southampton, Caleb with Man City, Robert with the rest, Liverpool, Newcastle, and Arsenal. I think Will's the only one here. I think we're just going to go, Will. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to trade. TWC trade window closed. Will, what, what is, oh, you said you were a, you're a Manchester United fan, right? Rivals, one of my best friends, Man United fan. A lot of, uh, a lot of arguments over the years. A lot, a lot of words exchanged over the, over the years, Will. A lot of mean words, unkind words. A lot of, a lot of inappropriate words. Things I cannot say on air. And remember, we're we're in, we're in California. We're in California, so uh, so we're 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 getting up early to watch these matches sometimes. And so it's a it's a hell of a way to start the day. With uh, sometimes or a number of pints in at the old pub, at the old pub before the sun's even come up. Oh so, yeah. What are you gonna tell me when you? Are we gonna exchange stories? But you're all right with Liverpool. I, I mean, I respect Manchester United. All right. You became a fan of Chicago at a pub at 5.30 a.m. Yeah. That's, it's, it's brutal being an English Premier League fan in the United States. Requires a lot of a lot of commitment. World Cup, World Cup too gets rough as well. There's four out of four because you don't know what part of the world it's going to be in. There's Mateo Kokovic. I think what was the best World Cup for me in California? I think the best World Cup was. I think the best World Cup was the one in Germany. There's Bergwin for Tottenham. That'll go to Michael. Because I think, I want to say, if I remember correctly, the one in Germany, 
the early matches, quote unquote, would start like at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. local time, and like the late match was like 2 a.m. So that's like prime, like <laughs> that's prime, like you know, you're out at a bar partying time, you know. So I, that that summer I remember was a lot of a lot of weekends or nights at like house parties, just hanging out with friends and and uh, a group of friends watching and yelling at TVs. While the other group are like, why are they yelling and watching soccer at this time of night? Sergio Aguero for Manchester City. There's Christian Pulisic. And a silver. I think that might have been the, the best time. But there's been some others that have been rough. There's Pulisic for Chelsea. That's for you, Will. There's, I don't know, but then there were there were there was one Euros or World Cup maybe it was Euros maybe it was World Cup I forget there's one World Cup oh there's gold here gold alert where like we had to watch matches like at eight what's back when I had like a nine to five you'd have to watch super early in the morning before you can even get to work and we got Josh Anoma nice five out of ten emergent. Gold parallel for Fulham. Caleb could go for a lot. These low numbered cards, up and coming players. Nice. Mason Mount also for Will and Chelsea. We've got Kyle Edwards for West Brom. That'll be for Robert. Ooh, look at there's Jeff Hendrick and a really nice Bruno Fernandez, 39 out of 75, cracked ice. That's awesome. That'll go to Jeff and Man United. This guy, this guy put in a nice free kick against against Liverpool a couple weeks ago. It's pretty good. Great pickup for for Man United. I think it's his first year in the Premier League. There's Dominic Calvert-Lewin for Everton. That's going to be for Jeff. You went on three-hour lunches to watch? Yeah, I remember having to me and my a group of my friends meeting at a bar all in our work clothes at like seven, six in the morning to watch uh, to watch Team USA. I would lose to Ghana or something like that, yelling at the TV. There's Hyunmin Son for Tottenham going to Michael. The World Cup in the Middle East is going to be really interesting in Qatar because they actually moved the World Cup from the summertime to the fall winter time. That's going to be a trip. There's Raul Jimenez, Wolverhampton. It'll be memorable, but it'll be a trip. I think they'll screw up some Premier League schedules, I think. I think a lot of the European leagues, Germany, France, Spain, so on and so forth, they have like a already naturally built-in month-long rest period between like November-ish through December-ish. There's Thiago Silva, Silver. It's Harry Kane. So there's like a... So that's already built in, but the Premier League doesn't have that built in. In fact, it's tradition for them to go and play like these Christmas matches and Boxing Day matches and whatnot. The festive fixtures, as they call them. There's James Tukarski to 199. Uh, that's for Burnley. That's going to go to Michael Golder. And so, so Premier League's going to have to figure out how to, how to work around all that. There's Will Smallbone. It's not this year but it's next year 2022 that'll be weird all right right bill yeah uefa's 2022 23 season are going to be so because they're still making up euros this fall or this summer that is they're making up for last year's euros this year 
So that's two international World Cup si or, uh, international cycles for like major tournaments for the European teams. You know, and I don't know what like the South American leagues are doing for their tournaments. We didn't have our tournament. We had like the CONCACAF Gold Cup. So all that gets screwy. Euros this summer. No international summer World Cup, but it's later in the year. And then 23, it's supposed to be another Euros, I think, because I think Euros are every other, every two years? Or are they on an every four-year cycle? I think they're in between World Cup cycles. So, so that, gets, that gets screwy, too. And yeah, I mean, and that's going to affect the Premier League. And then, you know, some clubs are hurting financially because, I mean, so you can't have, you can't add depth, as much depth as you want to a team. I think you're going to see, I think you're probably going to see a lot of, a lot of youngsters being introduced to international competition this summer. And like, and for the World Cup, I think. So I think you're going to start to see Premier League clubs say, eh, we're not going to let you take these guys. These, are, these guys are injured. So then there's the classic argument of club or country. So for the hobby, what does that mean for the hobby? I guess, I guess seeing more youngsters make, just get forced into action could be, could be good for the hobby because then a new superstar can be born in a, in a World Cup. Those are always fun to see. There's always someone that comes out of nowhere. Remember James Rodriguez? I think in Brazil, the Brazil World Cup. He kind of put it, put himself on the map. There's Sadio Mane, and behind him is Wayne Rooney. Even casual fans have to know Wayne Rooney. He played the he played in the MLS for a little bit too. Where is he at now? He started at Everton, went to went to Manchester United, and was amazing there. Then went to Washington, D.C. for a little bit. Played for like a year or two. Then was like a player coach for a small club and now might be now might be officially retired and, and maybe trying to get into some club ownership or management or something like that. Here's Fabian Delph. Bill's saying we've got a player in Arsenal named Martinelli. Yeah, I think I'm familiar with him. And they're going to make him go back and forth from London to Brazil. That's brutal. More injuries, blah, blah, blah. Ah, he's the Derby County manager. There we go. There's Joe Bryan for Fulham. And Hyun Min Son, red. Michael, Michael K with the Tottenham Hotspurs. Getting the, the I think that his base cards alone sell really well. So parallels, you're probably looking at hundreds of dollars, I think. It's pretty nice. There's rookie Curtis Jones. He's kind of a big deal for Liverpool, Robert. Yeah. Ryan Fredericks for the Hammers. It's for Robert and West Ham United. We got Miguel Almiron, 89 out of 199. Newcastle. Robert. Nico, oh, nice. Uh, Roberto Firmino, kaboom. Nice one for Liverpool. Robert Runkle's got my club. Very underrated Brazilian right here. Roberto Firmino. Very nice. We haven't seen a kaboom card in a little while. There you go, nice. 
Little Liverpool Joe Mojo. There's Olivia Giroud. 19 out of 49 for Chelsea. That'll be for Will. Pascal Gross for Brighton. And Wilfred Zaha for Crystal Palace. That'll be for Derek. Are those, do, do, Nate, do those fall one per case? The Kaboom? I don't know if that's all. Maybe they do. I thought they were maybe every other case. There's a uh, Jorginho Wijnaldum, Wijnaldum for uh, Liverpool. Pretty important key in the Liverpool midfield, but he might be moving on to, to much more greener pastures this year. Liverpool could use could use him. They could use him. Be nice if he signed back here. 37 out of 199. Vitinha. All I know is those kabooms are rare. We don't see those too often. Yeah, maybe they are every 12 boxes then. Uh, Wolves are, Wolverhampton, Wander, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Robert with the Wolves. Yeah, rare for show. Nice Phil Foden from Man City. Man City running away with the league. They got they're on sixty eight points. Manchester United's at fifty four points. Not too many matches left. Looks like Sheffield's going down for sure. Sheffield and West Brom are going down for sure. And I guess Fulham, Brighton, Newcastle are trying to not get themselves relegated to the lower division. There's Bobby Firmino again. There's Patrick Bamford for Leeds. Leeds, I think, are staying comfortably up. Yeah, Leeds are comfortably mid-table. They're in 11th. There's Bruno Fernandes. Leeds used to be back in like the 60s and 70s, maybe even 80s, I want to say, were like a really big club, real classic club. That reminds you of old school soccer when people talk Leeds. You know, there's Bruno Fernandes again. So they're back up. They're going to stay up. That's a challenge when these clubs in the second division down go up to the Premier League. Or they call it the championship, actually. And when they go up to the Premier League, the hard part is staying up. But if you could stay up for a couple of years, then you can start generating the, the money where, and the revenue where you could then be in the Premier League for a long time. It's Courtney House to 75 for Aston Villa. Daniel James is a name, right? I think. So many players to keep, keep track of. Johnny Evans for Leicester. Robert has the Foxes. And at the very end right here, we got something for Tottenham. 46 out of 135, Pierre-Emile Hoisberg for Michael and Tottenham. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was two box random team 23 of 2020 Panini Premier League Soccer, the EPL, some footy. Thanks for breaking with us. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.